trials and tribulations, the highs and the lows, doubt, and everybody. opportunity, showcasing your true talent. These are all signs of an underdog. These are all signs of a 1980 USA hockey team. These are all signs of the 2007 Giants beating the undefeated Patriots. The Butler Bulldogs back-to-back -back title runs in the early 2010s. Jeremy Lin and Lin Sanity. These are all signs of Matt DiBenedetto and his career in NASCAR. Matt DiBenedetto, born in Grass Valley, California, wanted to be a professional race car driver his entire life. At the age of 13, he moved to North Carolina to pursue that dream. Matt raced with Joe Gibbs Racing in the Canon Series in 2009, and he also made a total of seven starts for JGR in the Now Xfinity Series between 2009 and 2010. Matt got two of his three Canon wins with Gibbs. And then here are the in the 2010 Xfinity Series races, Matt's best finish was 9th be at Iowa, Iowa and had an average finish of 22nd oh, place. Boy. That's bad luck. So, and let's go on board with Brad and see what he was seeing. I got the 20 up high, come on hard, low, come oh. on, come on, low. Yeah. <sighs> and that last turn that Matt made was such a hard left that Brad just didn't have anywhere to go. After that 2010 season, the 18-year-old Matt DiBenedetto started his journey to get back in solid equipment, but it wasn't without heartache. After the JGR thing went south, I was like, wow, I wasn't ready. That's, this is, that's it. I had one shot. I'm done. Um, so that was a tough one. And when I was kind of sitting out doing nothing, I, I'm like, I have no skill sets, nothing. I'm not good at anything else. I don't like anything else. What, what am I going to do with my life? Um, so that was just miserable on me and, and my family. And then Matt DiBenedetto continued to grind out his career for the following years to come, when in 2015 he made his first career start in the Cup Series, racing for an underfunded team in BK Racing. The previous year, BK Racing's only full-time Cup driver finished 35 in points. Matt DiBenedetto brings it home six today. Matt, obviously a huge finish for this small team. Your thoughts? I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm so speechless. Just... I'm so thankful to everybody on this team, everybody at BK Racing, Cosmo Motors in Hickory in North Carolina. They're local to me. He's my best friend. Sell some awesome cars. Please check him out. Um, everyone at BK Racing, Dustless Blasting. I'm, these guys, man, that's unbelievable for you know, a team like us to be growing this much and for us to get a sixth place run. I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. It's just, this is like a win for us and I am, so excited i see my family back here my wife taylor just my brother is in town from the military um, and i'm so glad he got to experience this this is just this is incredible this is so i'm so blessed to be here big finish for bk racing nascar is all about sponsorship some drivers may be not deserving of a ride and get it because they have a bag of money and other drivers maybe are deserving of a good ride but can't get it because they don't have any money and sponsors to bring to the table. So they have to work their butt off to prove that they're worthy of a good car. Matt always overperformed in all of his equipment, but just struggled with the sponsorship side of things. Matt raced his way all the way up to a sixth place finish in the underfunded 83 car. From 2016 to 2017, Matt moved to Go Fast Racing, where yet again, he had to overperform in non-race winning equipment. Matt raced over at GoFast for a total of two years, continuously outperforming in the equipment he was given, but his sponsorship was still the overarching problem. In the 2018 Phoenix Spring Race, Matt was going to race without a sponsor, so he went to social media to ask for just that. A ton of money came in to help his GoFast team complete in the Phoenix race, including some from competitors like Denny Hamlin. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin first uh, reached out and said he wanted to um, uh, hop on board and help Kevin Harvick, and then uh, Daryl Waltrip and so many folks just reaching out wanting to help. Uh, that That's unbelievable man that 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 does help us a, a ton every little bit goes a long way here so so that is is incredible 
thank you guys all so much. I don't even know what to say, man. Thank you is not near enough. Um. In the 2018 season, Matt, thinking he wouldn't ever get a chance to race in better performing equipment, took a leap of faith and said that he wasn't going to return to the 32 car without any plans for the next season. Luckily for him, his performance on the track handed him a one-year contract in the 95 Toyota at Levine Family Racing, where, yet again, he had to outperform the equipment. The first race of this season and the first race in a new car, Matt leads the most laps at the Daytona 500. This trend of him overperforming would continue throughout the year. You know, when a car like Matt DiBenedetto has right now in the drive that he's on, when you run a guy down from that far back, you pretty much say, yeah, man, good job. Got <laughs> That's right. Go Have at it. <laughs> Very nice job by Matt today. All day long. I mean, I love the way he's run all day long. Mike Wheeler, the crew chief, you saw there briefly. and He was eight seconds behind Harvick and ran him down. Just a couple races before the playoffs, the week before the Bristol night race, Matt was told by his team owner that he would not be returning the next season to race for them. Devastated, Matt did what he knows to do, go out and put on a show. People just couldn't imagine how much of a toll it takes on us. But, um, but also the way that I try and look at it is just being appreciative that I've had to go about it this kind of old school way that's taught me so much and, and made me really mentally strong. Seventh today from Grass Valley, California. Starting in seventh in a 20th to 25th place car, Matt has his eye on the prize. The whole night, Matt stayed within attacking distance of the leader. And with 104 laps left, that's when Matt De Benedetto charged into the lead. What are you willing to do? What is the 95 willing to do to win his first race? If the 11 does get there, it's a big gap behind the 11. Four seconds. I think these two, without a caution, they're going to fight it out between the two of them. Well, and side by side for the lead. A little contact. The 11 made that move because of this. He believes he can get there and maybe catch him. Use the 12 of Blaney as a pick. Denny Hamlin now has the advantage. He's in front. Hamlin in front of Bristol. Leading every single lap until 12 to go, Matt got passed from none other than Denny Hamlin, who helped fund his car just the year before. Finishing the race in second place and nearly getting a win, just less than a week after being told that he wouldn't be returning to the 95 car, left Matt very emotional after the race. So much. I wanted to win so bad for these guys, for this team, for them giving me this opportunity. Um, uh, I'm just thankful that they gave me this opportunity. Toyota, uh, Procore, Dumont Jets, and Esta Wada, Spring Pro Mounts all. I'm so thankful, but man, I am, I'm sad. We got tight after the deal with Newman when he came up into us, and it all of a sudden it got really tight after that. But, uh, dude. Congrats to Denny. He raced hard. He's I, I've been a fan of his since I was a kid. To be racing door to door with him at Bristol in front of a great group of fans. Uh, I'm trying try not to get emotional, but it's been a it's been a tough week. And, uh, I just want to stick around. I keep doing this full on tuck become I I love it. I love the opportunity. And I uh, I'm not done yet. Something will come open. It's gonna it's gonna happen. I'm I'm here to win. Something's gonna come from open. I'm proud of these guys. Thankful for my wife and fans for sticking with me. It's been a tough journey. It's been a hard week, and this is a this cool for this team. Not the win Matt was looking for, but he was able to showcase his talent and what he can truly do, which is all he could have asked for. I mean, I know I know a win would mean uh, a lot to that team, but uh, I got to give 110 percent for FedEx and my whole team. And uh... closing out the season in the 95 car. Matt didn't have a ride for the next year. That is until Paul Menard told the Wood Brothers to go out and hire Matt De Benedetto to ride in the fully sponsored 21 car for the 2020 season.
Matt has gone through so many highs and lows in his career, but being able to showcase his talent landed him a race winning car for the 2020 season. Just four races into the 2020 season, and Matt is on track for his best season of his life. The 28-year-old driver has already racked up a second-place finish and is currently in eighth in the standings. It was, man. This was all just uh, too surreal. Tough to be that close, but hey, this is only the second race of the season. So it shows the uh, strength of this team. It's so cool to have the backing of all the people that allowed me to drive this thing. It took so many people. I mean, Motorcraft, Quick Lane, to be driving this iconic car is so cool. And uh, Menards, you know, and Paul, I know you're watching at home and proud and can't thank him enough and that whole family for this opportunity for the uh, power under the hood is always good. I'm glad to be uh, having that Roush Yates power under the hood. But uh, man, this whole team, Greg Irwin, all of them, we, uh, we recovered. It wasn't pretty at the start, but man, they did an excellent job. I'm so happy to be working with this team, the fans. Thank you all so much. The, the journey has been pretty cool. Thanks, Matty. As they get back to racing, Matt DiBenedetto's career shows you that there are going to be highs and there's going to be lows, but as long as you put your all into it and keep on fighting, everything will work out for the better and be just fine. Matt DiBenedetto, a true underdog.